Back in 2021, I released the Mini OS. It's an oscillator module that I've designed. And this was my very first PCB-based Eurorack module. Since then, I've learned a lot about PCB design. For one, I've learned how to work with SMD components. So I thought this was a great time to do a version 2. It had two tuning knobs, coarse and fine. It had a frequency modulation input with an attenuator. It also had a knob for pulse width. It has a voltage per octave input and has two shapes for the output. One is a saw wave and another one is a pulse wave. Now let's talk about my goals for this new version. As I've mentioned earlier, I wanted to convert this module from through-hole to surface mount components. I just like how much cleaner the layouts become when you move to smaller components. With the old version, I had to use three separate PCBs, one for the front panel and these two just to hold all of the circuitry. The two main boards are then connected through these pins. With this new version, I wanted to keep it within two boards, just like with my more recent designs. Having one less PCB helps keep the cost down. Since I've made the first one, I've used it a lot, so there are some features that I realized I needed. First is a triangle wave output. Saw and pulse were great, but sometimes I just needed something more smoother like a triangle. The first version had a pulse width control, but it didn't have a CV input, so I wanted to add that to the new one. I also wanted to add a sync input so that I can chain multiple oscillators for more tone shaping. Before I did the new PCB, I wanted to confirm that the changes I made were working fine. I also wanted to play with the new features first before I made them permanent. To do this, I hacked my old modules and added a 3D printed panel along with some dead bugged point-to-point -point circuitry containing the new features. I ran these modules for a while, bringing them to gigs and playing with them. I started with the schematics for the old version, but I had to fix some stuff. This took me a while because the old circuits were made on KiCad 5 and I've just upgraded to KiCad 7. I had to realign a lot of things to the new grid. Some of the symbols were also missing. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. Most of the components that I used in the previous model had SMT versions, except for the transistors which I had to swap with some other models. I also wanted to add a switch for the sync input to give me some control during performances. The default footprint library for KiCad didn't have this, so I had to make my own. This footprint is available on my GitHub along with some other Eurorack footprints that I use. With the schematics done and finalized, I then brought everything into the PCB editor to figure out a rough layout. This also gave me an idea on how much space I needed. I was able to confirm that the new version, even though it had more features, would still fit within the 6 HP that the old version was in. After I arranged all of the components, I exported my design into SVG, which I then imported into Inkscape, where I drew all of the labels. I had to go back and forth between KiCad and Inkscape. Once I'm done, I saved my drawing into a PNG file and loaded it back into KiCad through the image converter tool. I then exported it into my clipboard and then pasted it into the PCB editor. I lined it up with the rest of the components, placed the holes for alignment, till finally I had a finished PCB design. I exported my Gerber files and then sent them over to PCBWay, who also sponsored this project. They also sponsored the very first version of this module, and they have been my go-to PCB manufacturing partner ever since. I just have to do some tweaks before I post this one there, but PCBWay has a shared project page where you can order my designs directly from their website. I'll give an update in the description once this is ready. Thank you PCBWay for supporting my channel. The PCBs arrived after a week, but I had to order some parts that I didn't have then. After more waiting, it was time to start the build. I like to hand solder my SMT builds 
because it gives me a little more control. I do that with the help of my microscope from Link Micro. The build went pretty smoothly. After an hour or so, it was time to test the module. And I was happy that it worked the first time I plugged it in. After some further testing, I found some minor issues that I wanted to fix. The BWM knob and the pulse width knob were switched places. The front panel hole for the button was also a little too tight for it to move freely. I used the wrong footprint for the trim pot. It still works but it sticks out on the side a bit. Strangely, the range of this version was at a slightly lower frequency than the first one. To fix this, I replaced the capacitor on the oscillator from 2.2 nanofarads to 680 picofarads. I was still able to tune it and calibrate it properly. After playing with the module a bit, I went back to KiCad and corrected the mistakes that I made. I'll do an update video in the future once my new PCBs arrive. You can find my write-up about this build on my website. I'll add a link in the description. All of my files for this are also open source and can be found on my GitHub. If you'd like to support my work, please consider donating through Coffee. That would help me pay for the parts that I use for these builds. For now, let me leave you with a jam that I made using my new mini-OSC module. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one.